Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters, Al Heyman. Thanks for your support. Now in today's video, we're going to go over AS study with his manifest as a five star, and of course I'll do a little gameplay and let you know what I think about him. But the most important question of all is, is he hot or not? He's hot. He's a biker dude. Well, I don't have a bike, so I guess I'm losing there. Anyways, AS study with Manifest is a little bit more powerful than before. Now, his VC is still the same. Fire Pierce AO uh, AoE and Power Down. Note that he does have the transfer buff and debuff during member switch, which I will demonstrate. Um, however, I don't know if that ability itself is extremely powerful, given that a lot of times we don't have time to switch in in VCs. Um, we are getting punished with some of the tougher bosses in trying to have everyone on the front line. Now, that being said, he still has his four star moves. Try Assault, which is a uh, Pierce, you know, times three. He's got Analysis Lance, Int down 20, which is really not viable in today's meta. Uh, he has Striking Lance, which is Pierce resistant down 20. Again, very, very weak debuffs here. But, you know, I still left it as try cell because at least you have a three times hit, um, you know, and also gives fire resistance down. Now, in terms of his two AS moves, it's a lot of words here. Flash Assault is a fire pierce single enemy and on all enemies XL. Counts as one move, by the way, during the AF. And power and speed stackable 50% for a total of 100% if you get all three stacks. Note that each time it attacks, you can get full tone acceleration stacks, which will now give him additional abilities. It will restore uh, MP 15%, increase max HP, and after two stacks, then it'll finally give crit rate 100% for three moves and crit damage 50% for three moves. So note that it's only after he has two stacks on him before he can do the additional attack with Force Assault and then give himself those crit boosts. And I'll show you that in the video a little bit later on. It's a little bit um, misleading in the fact that I thought that after the second move, you're able to do it right away. Now, in terms of Blast Drive, note that this is a Fire Blunt Attack AoE. Physical and Type Resistance 25% up shielding for all main and reserve party members similar to cat daddy guardian this is for three turns and it gives himself type attack up when in af it does not consume his stacks just like most um, manifested as units note that when you have max stacks it does increase the damage number of hits and also the turns that these shielding and other things um work for so for example the max will be five turns uh 45 45 physical and uh type shield which is actually quite significant in terms of his board you can see right here those are his two five star moves and note that again we are using the mp consumption grass does so obviously it's going to cost more to do our moves his personality is coa glasses and lens so plan accordingly for your grass holders to help share those with him Again, you can always customize your Grasta as needed. So let's take him out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So in our first example, we'll just demonstrate a couple of his uh, five-star moves. Most of the time, you are going to set up with multiple stacks of Force Assault. If you do get a crit, then you'll get two stacks right away. Then you can do a second Force Assault get yourself that crit rate to 100% plus crit damage at 50% to himself. And then finally, you can spam the um, blast drive. Okay, and we'll just try that again with the uh, mobs here. One other thing is that it does gen regenerate MP um, once you have the first stack here. You can see that you already get yourself 15% back, which actually can help um, extend fights quite a long time if you need to stall strat or anything like that. And if you do it three times, you are stacking uh, power and speed up to 100% at three stacks. And then finally, you can do the blast drive, which does, um, in this case, uh, multi hits and uh, plenty of damage with the crit guarantee and the crit damage up 50. Now, one thing that's probably less um, you know, utilized nowadays, you can actually VC him in and it does do some damage. Certainly not that much damage compared to, you know, the AoEs that you're probably used to with Flam, Eva, and so on and so forth. But if you still have this unit and you don't really have um, very powerful units for AoEs or you're early in the game, that might be enough to clear most weaker enemies. And finally, we'll demonstrate the um, 
so-called testament uh, ability, which is uh, the ability to share uh, or transfer buffs and debuffs from him to the person he VCs in. So if you're going to do that, the best way to do is probably to do three force assaults, give yourself um, you know, that 100, 100 speed and power. If you really need to, you can switch in directly and give um, you know, the unit you're VCing in with all those stacks. Or if you want to protect the unit in the back, then you would follow it up with a blast drive. And remember, that gives shields up to 45-45 after um, multiple stacks. And then you would VC in that unit so that everyone is protected as you're changing up for at least that one turn. And it will stay for the remainder of either three turns for the stacks or five turns for the shield. Now in our first example of using him in a fight, again we will st start off with a force assault, try to get as many stacks as we can, and once we get the three stacks, well I call it 2 plus 1, giving himself a uh, guaranteed crit and all that, and increased crit damage, then you can do that. Note that actually, um, this was actually my first foray into trying him, and in this example I did not stack the third hit of force assault. So that's what I mean by the uh, description was a little bit misleading in the fact that I thought you really needed to only do two hits of Force Assault and then followed by Blast Drive. Most of the time, unless you have a de dedicated crit setter on your team, you will have to do three hits of Force Assault um, to maximize his stacks and give everyone, um, give himself that um, you know crit damage up. Because remember, crit damage up is not only very significant, 50% up, it's also no cap in that you can give multiple stacks of crit damage up and it doesn't get um you know limited other than you know for example power into speed you can only get a maximum of 100 percent up right so that's very very good i will say that his self stacks actually do make him very viable in terms of dps and remember that he can still share grasta in this case as renry can share grasta with him in terms of glasses coa and so on and so forth okay in our second example, um, we're going to um, you know, take on some dual hatchios. Again, obviously it can be cleared with either three units and other things like that, but more to demonstrate kind of the uh, abilities he has uh, in some of the more difficult fights, being that the artificial spirit really isn't difficult at this point. Mind you, even some people will argue that the dual hatchios is not difficult at this fight given the power of the units we have here. That being said, uh, you're probably used to this by now, Pisaka will cast Oratorio, which will now um, not only clear, cleanse status, will heal at the end of turn and reduce damage and also regen MP and HP. So in this case, some of the diff more difficult fights, especially again if you have a more limited roster, um, ASD is really really good. Not only can he help maintain uh, MP for long periods of time, he can also give himself and the party members shielding up to 45% which is very significant, especially if you're facing elemental physical attacks, being that you know, you're know you going to get essentially 90% shielding if the enemies don't boost it themselves. Keep in mind that nowadays most of the bigger, uh, tougher fights out there, they give themselves stacks of power or int, and that actually um, does multiply their damage such that your shield may not be fully capable of handling all the damage. But certainly earlier fights in the game, 90% shielding, 45 from physical, 45 from type, will uh, do the trick. And it does have diminishing returns with, for example, someone like Nikoko here that gives 35-35. And so really, you're almost essentially getting 100% shielding from most uh, weaker type attacks, essentially. Not to mention, in the case of having a zone, zone does reduce damage as well from the opposite element, aka wind, by 50%. But we're here to see some damage, right? And there you go. Once you have all the stacks, and in this case, Nikoko can also give him uh, guaranteed crit if you don't want to have him give himself crit damage up you can do it that way um, and with that he was able to essentially one shot both of those dual hatchos remember that in years past uh, and dual hatchos had only been out for a year really th this fight was tough like you know having to mitigate so much damage facing multiple attacks over and over again very difficult to survive Nowadays, you have so many ways to mitigate damage, uh, debuffs, and so on and so forth, you can really um, do a number on some of these old bosses. Now, one downside with AS SETI is just like um, you know, most manifested AS units, once you use the stacks outside of the AF, it really doesn't do nearly as much damage. So keep that in mind in that 
his main strength is obviously to do tremendous damage in the AF, being that his stacks don't get um, used up. And the fact that, again, he can either regen MP or give yourself a type shield if you can stack it up early enough. And really, five turns is more than enough for a shield to kind of last if you haven't won the fight by then. All right, so same thing you can see AS Renry is holding some Grasta. Tisca is just doing her part in uh, making sure that we all survive. And Seti, my boy. All right. So let me know in the comments below what you think about AS Seti so far. If you're planning to use him or, um, you know, if he's going to sit on your bench or even worse, not get side graded. So remember that his setup move is Pierce, but his main DPS is actually Blunt. And so I tried using him in a Blunt team. So we're going to do a two turn AF against something like, um, you know, Xion. And, you know, Remember that Xion being a fire unit will be vulnerable to both uh, water and fire. In this case, we're just demonstrating that um, you know if you get a first turn force assault in, which is the pierce, it won't charge the bar beam that we're in blunt zone. But when we're in blunt zone, once we have everything set up, then we'll just blast blast drive over and over again. And in conjunction with other um, you know physical type units on our blunt team, we should have enough damage, doing significant amount of damage there. Okay. That's one thing I will say I don't like about some of these units that do one type of move damage and then one other type of, um, you know, weapon move. Because remember, remember in, in certain zones, they increase, um, you know, damage at the end of turn to all units that are blunt units, depending on the number of blunt use moves done that turn. And remember that since, for example, he is not actually a blunt user, he doesn't get that end of turn boost from some offensive type um, zone units, which is actually really, really unfortunate. Now, hey, that being said, it's not that he's bad or anything. It's just that it's a more complicated to use. And um, if you can see from the link of this video, there's actually a lot of interesting things that he can do. One lesser mentioned thing is the fact that he increases max MP HP by a thousand. So note that uh, with Xion, he's actually very fearsome to face if you're not well prepared. AS Subami took a direct hit and it didn't, didn't kill her. You know why? Extra uh, HP max really did help out. Okay, so again, Yifa is just to switch in AS Subami, our dual debuffer. And that's what I mean by, you can see that um, in these tougher fights where true manifested fights, they boost their own power, for example, then even with a dual debuff and um, multiple shields, it may not be enough to completely mitigate all the damage out there. All right. So in our final example here, we're going to um, demonstrate the duel of Azami, manifested true, of course, plus AS Seti. Now, if you're wondering why, because let's be honest, we already see solo fights with Azami versus uh, true manifested Zeta. It's more to kind of show how much mitigation um, and also the longevity of a fight as well. Remember that if you can set up properly, even with one stack of uh, Photon Acceleration, by casting that uh, shield, you're still giving yourself up to 35% type and physical, which again is comparable in strength and ability to Nokoko's Cat Daddy Guardian. And if you've used her, you know that it really does help you set up um, against damage. Because I would argue that if you don't have that up, those multiple hits may have killed AS Seti. I understand that you are going to put multiple power debuffs on the um, Dark Heavenly Tears, and that obviously helps us survive. But, you know, we're really trying to kind of just demonstrate um, the defensive nature of AS Seti in this case instead. Obviously, now that we have multiple power downs on all the enemies, we're taking a lot less damage. But still, I would argue that with him as an ability to tank hits and um, give shielding, don't forget that. Every time he does Force Assault, either if he has at least one stack, he's going to give you back 15% MP, which is great if you want to do stall tactics or things like that. I realize that not everyone has a complete roster, and if you have a more limited roster, but you happen to have an ASD, then you can kind of combine them with other strategies, depending on what you want to do. Either uh, VC in and switch um, your buffs and debuffs onto your more powerful units, or in the case where you can just cast Force Assault over and over again, and just... Um, 
you know, regen MP over and over again. That is really, really good. Okay. Of course, the end of turn heal is from Ukwaji, which some of you may not have had access to. It's more, like I said, to just demonstrate uh, Aesethi's uh, capabilities in longer fights. And again, don't forget his increased HP max by 1000. Now, I will say that after um, a couple of hours of experimenting with um, Aesethi, keep in mind that this video is only, what, 15 20 minutes or so? I, I, I would say I experimented two or three hours just kind of trying different ways of using Aesethi. I will say that in a Pierce team, he's definitely not effective um, because Pierce zone reduces his blunt you know, main attack by 30% and it decreases his ability to kind of charge the AF bar, which shortens your AF bar by quite a bit. And I don't really like that. Um, I'm never really a big fan of um, you know, losing optimization because really, if you need a fire pierce, you can still use AS Hozuki. You can even use Jade if you need him as a lesser. I will say that uh, AS Seti obviously has a very high um, damage multiplier. And so he is um, you know, almost the best of both worlds where he can do some defense, some offense, and significant offense at that provided you set him up and just like that finish it off no real danger of dying of course we have Ukwaji in the back healing as opposed to really um, him carrying the fight it, was, it wasn't all him we really needed a zombie to help with the power down and in down but he still did his part to help keep the fight in check and again you would have run out of MP otherwise so that obviously has to be on the team. Um, she wasn't carrying, actually. Uh, she's just there because we have to fight the true manifest. And of course, Kwaji in the healing setup. So, in conclusion, ASD with manifest does have some niche uses. Um, in a lacking fire team, he can certainly bring the DPS to your team and the ability to, to do niche things like transfer buffs and debuffs, um, lots of shielding, MP regen, and stuff like that. Pretty good. But I will say that I'm not sure that he would be um, used other than on pure fire DPS teams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.